A 10-year-old rape victim had to travel out of state for an abortion. Why is this is our country? I was numb as I sat down to write this column about a 10-year-old rape victim who had to travel out of state to get an abortion. Why did we let this happen? We told you. We told you this would happen if Roe v. Wade was overturned. Conservatives pushed through their ideological agendas anyway, and now. Here we are watching a child rape victim travel from Ohio to Indiana for an abortion, while her story is questioned for political points by right-wing media pundits and politicians. When I sat down to write a column about this 10-year-old rape victim having to travel across state lines for an emergency abortion, I had just dropped my six- and four-year-old daughters off at summer school, and I felt numb. Mother, sexual abuse survivor, rape survivor is a mother of two young girls who, God forbid, are ever violated in any way, I felt numb. As a survivor of sexual abuse, and a rape survivor, I felt numb. As a feminist and human rights advocate who has dedicated her life to advancing the rights of vulnerable people around the world and in my country, I felt numb. Russia is using rape as a weapon of war. Here's what can be done about E.T. tried to write but couldn't get past two questions I had typed on my otherwise blank screen. 1. Did the people who advocated for repealing abortion rights anticipate that, as a result of their success, 10-year-old children might be forced to give birth in states where the laws do not allow exceptions in cases of rape or incest? If so, how do they sleep at night? 2. Have my daughters inherited a country where states force child rape victims to give birth? The answer to both is emphatically and tragically. Yes. Victimized and re-victimized six weeks and three days. That's how far along in her pregnancy a ten-year-old rape victim in Ohio was when she was referred to drive. Caitlin Bernard in Indianapolis by a treating physician in Ohio. The Ohio doctor reached out to the Indiana of Jin because... Thanks to the Supreme Court's decision to take away the constitutionally protected right to abortion that had existed in the United States. For nearly 50 years, this child rape victim had no right to a legal abortion in her home state. Her cycle of tragedy was as follows. First she was raped as a child. Then she got pregnant. Then she couldn't have an abortion in her home state. Because it was banned after six weeks with no exception for rape and incest or fatal fetal anomalies, and so the girl was forced to gather the resources and courage to travel across state lines for the procedure. Then a public official stated that he didn't believe her story, casting doubt as if it were a game. On one of the worst tragedies known to human suffering, child sexual abuse. The state attorney general said, in an interview with the USA Today Network Ohio Bureau on Tuesday, What I'm saying to you is there is not a damn scintilla of evidence. And shame on the Indianapolis paper that ran this thing on a single source who has an obvious axe to grind. He was wrong. Now, the child is being used as a pawn in the political back and forth between people who have long argued about a person's right to bodily autonomy and are now arguing about a child's right to be free of her rapist's legacy. What's worse, what happened to this child is just the beginning, and advocates like me have been warning about it for months, if not years. Big sharks can keep the small fish out. Don't let bureaucrats curb home health care competition in Indiana. For instance, rape victims and people looking to terminate unwanted pregnancies likely won't be able to travel there from, say, Ohio. For abortion care, because that state is likely to pass highly restrictive abortion laws in the coming days.